Hello everybody. I set this camera angle up really wide to kind of give you the broad view of everything that's going on. Now over here I had to replace these plastic bushings with some metal ones that allow for grounding. And over on this side I really still have a mess of wires going on and I need to clean these things up. I've got to do something with the bus bars. I have to add some shunts and circuit breakers. So in no particular order, uh, let's roll into it. I have these wires here for the BMS that I set up a long time ago and they're running in the front. I have to fish them in the rear. So just gotta get all these wires to kind of tidied up in the back. That way we don't see them and they're not in the way when I go to run a board across the front. Get this guy on here like that. And then what I'm gonna do is just go up here and I'm gonna tape all these down. Now these are my two bus bar boxes. We have the positive and the negative. And I made these a while back out of some flattened pieces of copper pipe that I put in here. Uh, but this is actually fairly thin for the amps that we could pull. So I wanted to replace this one. Uh, be mounting this shunt in here. Now this is a 600 amp shunt. And this matches the Chargery BMS. This came with the Chargery BMS, which is this guy. And so I have to mount this one in here as well. This is a big ABB circuit breaker and it has a remote trip. So the BMS on the battery will be able to shut this off remotely. But I can't just mount this out on the wall as is. It has to be inside a box. And it has to trip, um, excuse me, it has to turn on and off the positive side. So <laughs> what I actually found after mapping this out is I should have mounted these two things uh, different. I should have put the positive up top and the negative down below. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these screws, probably cut this uh, two by board back here and then move the two boxes around. Well I got these two boxes flipped so now the positive is on the top which is opposite the way that these batteries are laid out because I got the positives all on the bottom half but this will make it easier for when I attach the shunt trip here is a big steel box. <laughs> Check this out. So this is an 18 by 18 inch steel box, four inches deep. And this is what I'll use to house the breaker. Looks like the lid just comes off like that. And it's a UL, you know, it's a, it's a box that's UL certified and it goes right here. Great. <laughs> now, Oh darn, there's a dent in it. Oh man. Look at that. Shoot. Brand new box, just out of the plastic. It's already a dent. Let's see here. All right, fixed it. <laughs> Something I've realized after buying the metal wire weight troughs and the conduit between the inverters and the wire weight and now this box. All of these things are very expensive and all the fittings to go between them are very expensive because everything has to be UL listed. <laughs> so if I did it again, I would probably have gotten like one big box, maybe like a 24 by 24 by six inch deep 
and I probably would have tried to get the bus bars, the circuit breakers, and everything crammed inside the box, because the more I could get inside the box, the less individual boxes I would have had to buy, and I think it would have overall been less expensive if I could have done that. The wires that I'm using are 2 uh wire gauge. So they're big fat cables and they need a radius to bend. And so I can't have this way up high because now I don't have enough clearance to bend that cable. Now it could probably do it because I have flexible wire that I bought for this purpose, but it wouldn't be to code. I have to maintain a certain wire distance. So I'm gonna mount the ABB breaker lower to give myself more room to make that radius. So I'm gonna mount it over to the left, over in kind of this corner, left down. This gives me plenty of clearance up top. And there's a little uh, sticker on the side here that shows that you want the battery to be coming in from the top and the load, which is the inverter, to be coming out the bottom. I have to drill three holes in the bottom to go into the wireway. And over in this corner, uh, I already have one shunt, and this is for the BMS shunt. But I have another shunt, this one, which is specifically for the inverters. Okay, I have my three pilot holes drilled. Now I'm gonna need to punch these out, and this is a one inch chase nipple. And this is what I'm gonna be using for each one to be able to feed into the bottom of the circuit breaker. So here's my one inch knockout. Now it's bigger than actual one inch, but that's just what we call it. Here's the head of the hydraulic punch. And I have drilled my three holes using the step bit right here. And I've gotten them big enough uh, to accept this smaller shaft. Now I'm supposed to be able to use the smaller shaft to make the pilot hole before the bigger one. So we're gonna try that. I haven't done it before. So there's these spacers, so put them on uh, the female side of the die, and then I have the cutter head, which is going to go from underneath, and then this is just like a big nut to go on the underside of that. So let's try it out. Get that on there. We'll see if this works. All right, I think that busted through. Okay. And it made a hole through both layers. So now we have the one inch set. And this is a lot easier when you get the big ones. Because you just throw that straight on. And then the die has the threads, or excuse me, so now the cutter head has threads in it. I think I have enough holes in there. I got nine holes through all those boxes. Let's see if they all line up. And I think that's pretty cool that they all line up like that. These three are for the big breaker. These are two to go in for the negative and two to um, the openings for the positive. So I think we're probably good. Here's about where the breaker is gonna sit in this box and I want enough clearance so that I can get these. It comes with these, these long screws. They're gonna go all the way through the case, but I need to drill and get them in from the backside with a nut. So I'm gonna mark these out. Let's take a look. Yep, I can see my spots, excellent. When I put the breaker in here, I have to put a nut and washer on the back side of this box and that will make the box stand off the wall a little bit. So to prevent it from standing off the wall a little bit, which would <laughs> misalign all of my holes, I'm going to use a Fostner bit and drill a shallow hole in the OSB where each uh, nut is going to line up. I marked out where the four nuts are going to go to hold the breaker on the back side and here's a three quarter inch Fostner bit.
Now, if that's not enough, I can always come back and do some more, but I think that will probably be enough. I also drilled a couple of holes down here for the shunt to go in. So now we should be able to get the breaker in. Uh, here we go. Move it along. I can, there it goes. It just fell in. Fell in place. So now I got a little washer and nut I can put on. There we go. Well, check it out. We got that big breaker mounted. On the back side, you can see those screws keeping it in place. So here's a one and a quarter inch, and it's uh, smooth on one side. We'll just throw that in, that opening. And then we have this uh, lock ring. Now these two need to be tightened up, but that gets the idea. I have a shunt here, and I marked out the shunt and pre-drilled for the holes in the base of the shunt. That's gonna go right here. So there's actually two shunts on this assembly. This shunt is for the Chargery BMS. This shunt is one that I had to buy for the uh, inverters. Up here in this corner is a dimple, and that's where the grounding screw goes. So I'm going to grab a little lay-in lug and the grounding screw, and we'll put these in. All right, there we go. So here's the cover, and I cut out the opening. For the breaker. Now if we put this in, we'll have access to the outside. Now when we screw the cover on, we'll have access to the disconnect from the outside. So this will be the main disconnect for the battery. I hope everybody enjoyed this update video on how the big project is going. This is part of my total off-grid system. So I'm going to be trying to power my entire house off the grid using solar energy. I got a big rack of batteries over here. I've got inverters off to my right. And, you know, this disconnect and its ability to trip uh, with the BMS is something that's important with lithium batteries. In case anything goes out of whack, I need the BMS to be able to disconnect it. And I need an, a main disconnect for the entire battery pack. Now this all had to be enclosed. If I was to do it again from the beginning, I probably would have gotten a larger, say 24 inch by 24 inch box. And then I could have fit these bus bars for the positive and negative inside the box with all of it. That would have saved me some of these connections. Then had the entire box lower and just had this wire way feed directly into the side of the box instead of being from underneath. I could have had less connections that way and less connections would have actually been quite a bit of money. When I started this, I wasn't thinking about how many connections I would need at every wire or every box or every conduit. Now it adds up really quick. I'm very much surprised. I don't have a final tally yet of how much all of it's going to cost, but by the time I'm done, the metal boxes, fittings, conduit, uh, these accessory type things, uh, they're going to wind up having cost as much as the inverters cost me. And so that's a real big surprise to me having gone into this. I wasn't expecting the accessory stuff to be the big ticket item. <laughs> and it really adds up quick. So uh, I know we didn't run any wires in this video, but that should be fun for the next video. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. Check out the links in the description below if you'd like to help support the channel. All right, see ya.